Today, I want to talk to you about the AEMC preview. I want to talk about the format, the scoring system, the competencies, and the strategies to beat this test. If you haven't watched or listened to any of the previous episodes, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Beruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at BMO. And this is the Admissions Expert One Question Podcast. Normally, we take one topic, we slice and dice it in many different ways and try to give you as much tips as possible to help you with your journey in your medical education. And if you enjoyed this at all, of course, make sure you subscribe, like and comment. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to also share it with a friend who may enjoy it as well. Hi, my name is Janine. Sorry for the interruption. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like to take advantage of our mentorship programs, schedule a free strategy call by visiting bmofreestrategy.com. As a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. By the way, we're giving away Amazon gift cards every week to best comments and questions. So comment below for a chance to win. Now, let's get back to the video. So let's get started. What's the AMC preview? What is this test? This is a form of a situational judgment test. A situational judgment test is normally a type of a test where you're given a hypothetical scenario, real life, they usually say it's a real life scenario, uh, and then you're uh, given this hypothetical situation and asked, how would you react if you were in that situation? Uh, and maybe we'll give an example from uh, the AMC itself, just so you guys get an uh, idea of how this is formatted. This is similar to Casper. This is similar to any other situational judgment test. These type of tests are, in my opinion, extremely old, extremely outdated, extremely ineffective. So in my opinion, AMC is going backwards in time instead of progressing. I made another uh, episode where I uh, explain how the MCAT is ineffective and it causes bias. Situational judgment tests also have a lot of issues on their own. They cause a lot of uh, you know nonsense. They, they cannot predict anything. A, in my opinion, they cannot predict intrinsic motivation, which is the most important predictor of happiness and performance in medical education and any other profession. Two, the, they correlate with a socioeconomic status of the individual taking the test normally. So that was my opinion. And, uh, you know, it's not willy nilly. Some of that has actually been done in research on uh, different types of situational judgment tests, not necessarily on AMC preview. But different situational judgment tests and AMC didn't really create anything innovative. Uh, essentially, in my opinion, they have just taken an old, very, very, very old test, situational judgment test, and branded it, put a trademark on it, make it look cool. Do I think it's effective and people should be doing this? Absolutely not. I cannot wait before this test goes away, before it even catches on. But until then, I want to give you some tips to be able to handle this. So what's the format? I already told you it's a situational judgment test. They claim that this has 30 scenarios, 186 items, and it will have 75 minutes to complete the test. Now, how is the test uh, scored? The test is scored uh, as follows. Now, normally, uh, you uh, are uh, asked a scenario, hypothetical scenario, then a bunch of questions under it, and for each question, you're asked to rate from four different uh, possibilities. Very effective, ineffective, effective, very effective. And they ask a medical educator to score the test and you score the test. And then they'll see if you're the closer you are in your answers to the medical educator or whoever their test raters are the higher your grade and the lower, the lower your grade. And I guess this is all relative to everyone else taking the test. So 
again, before I go, it, this is so uh, ridiculously bad, badly designed. AMC preview is so horribly designed that, you know, I keep getting distracted by telling you how horrible this test is instead of giving you tips. But I, I, I cannot, I have to tell you this. So you notice they give you four choices. That's a terrible test design. The person who designed this test has absolutely no clue about uh, uh, probability, statistics, and how to design a test. With respect, with respect, I will debate them live any day of the week, and I'll be able to uh, prove to you how this is misguided. Without going into into the uh, tangents, because I want to give you tips how to uh, how to uh, manage this test, this dumb test, in my opinion. This is flawed because when you give people four choices, there's no middle ground. There should always be when you're asking somebody to judge a degree of something, there must be always a middle ground. So odd number of choices is always garbage in that type of a test. So they could have asked for five different things. The best is actually seven. Based on research, seven is the best number of choices. So let's keep going. So that's how it's formatted. And uh, the competencies that they claim this test can uh, detect, which I don't believe for a second, uh, are the following. So they, they claim that uh, you know it's essentially the AMC core competencies. And I want to bring them up for you so I can, I can tell you what they are. And you could go on their website and read this, but essentially it's service orientation, social skills, cultural competencies, uh, teamwork, ethical responsibility, resilience, reliability, capacity for improvement, blah, 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 all that stuff. They think it could, it could detect this. I'm not convinced. I don't think it does anything. Uh, and most importantly, note how they missed out intrinsic motivation which is the only predictor backed by over 40 years of research all around the world from different disciplines, different scientists, none of them who care about AMC or anything like that or making money from these type of organizations who have demonstrated that it is one of the biggest predictors of performance, happiness, and uh, literally job satisfaction. And that's not even part of the things that this thing is detecting. So I, I really don't care what it does anymore. So this is what it does. You can go on the website and read about these. And uh, you know what's, what's the strategy you should use in this? The strategy you, you should use in AMC preview are very similar to the ones we give you for Casper. The two tests, in my opinion, are both misguided. They're both based on SJTs. So you could bet that you could use the same strategies for both of them to be able to hopefully get a good grade and hopefully never have to do this again. Again, of course, my wishes, they both go away as soon as possible. Now, uh, in the meantime, uh, one of the things you gotta do is you gotta, first of all, read carefully. As always, answer the, the question that is the easiest to you first, instead of getting stuck with the ones that are most difficult, okay? So you don't have to go in the order. There's no order. Order your own boss. When you get the different choices, you choose which one is the easiest, answer that first. Once you're done with that, you know, you have to have some sort of a strategy of how you do this. So what do we talk about when we talk about Casper is remain non-judgmental in your approach. Of course, you're not typing anything. It's a multiple choice or, you know, between four choices, but you could still figure out making sure that you're remaining non-judgmental, uh, especially when you don't have enough information. And you want to choose the option that is at least extremist, unless the answer is clear cut and the solution that causes the least amount of harm to those involved. This could be you, the other people that you're caring for, the profession at large, the community at large, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, you know, and this comes with, with a lot of practice. In another video, I'm gonna go over some sample questions and answers to see this. But uh, today, I just wanted to go over the overview of the uh, format and what I think about this test. But maybe we'll wrap up by reading one of the examples on AMC's website. Again, this is not our example. This is uh, AMC's example. So he here's one. You are pursuing a two week volunteer opportunity at a well regarded local clinic. When you receive your course schedule, you realize the volunteer opportunity would conflict with your weekly required lab. This is the only time that the lab is offered this semester. So you're not able to make up the lab participation in the lab will count toward your grade. 
So that was an example of AMC preview question provided by the AMC itself. Then it says, please rate the effectiveness of each response to this situation. One, skip your lab for two weeks to attend the volunteer opportunity. Very effective, ineffective, effective, very effective. Two, ask your lab instructor to identify a solution that will allow you to attend both. Very effective, ineffective, effective, very effective. Three, stop pursuing the volunteer opportunity so you can attend the required lab. Very effective, ineffective, effective, very effective. Four, tell your lab instructor in advance that you will miss two weeks of scheduled lab session. Very effective, ineffective, effective, very effective. Five, attend the lab and investigate if similar volunteer opportunities are available at another time. So common sense would say that, hey, yes, the situation is trying to throw you. This is the only volunteer experience you could have only this time. That's not real life. So as I read one of these, I'm like, you know, one of the easiest uh, common sense things is that, of course, you're going to attend the lab because you cannot not attend it. Of course, I'm going to discuss with my lab uh, instructor uh, to see if there is any possibilities that I could do both. Is there any possibility? Because if somehow they, we could come to an agreement that doesn't take up their time, well, then this is resolved. Done, right? That becomes very effective. Another very effective method, even though, remember, I don't want to usually give very uh, extremist examples for AMC preview, but another I think would be very effective would be that, hey, okay, this is not the only lab uh, volunteer experience in the world, right? So I'm just going to attend the lab. If I cannot find a solution with the lab instructor, I'm going to attend the lab and look for something else that's similar. Uh, the other, you know, there's other ones There's tell your lab instructor in advance you will miss. So you're going to just miss it. Of course, that's better than just skipping it. So there was one that says, I'm just going to skip it and go, well, obviously, if you're going to do that, it's better. At least they know. So that's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of, I guess, effective, ineffective, but it's required work. So you see, they put you in a dilemma. That's how these situations are. I want my, I need volunteerism, but I also need that lab. If I don't go to the lab, I'm going to lose. So again, whether you tell them or not, of course, if you tell them is very ineffective, it's still ineffective if you tell them you're going to miss. They're going to be like, okay, great, you're going to miss. You're going to get a zero. Thank you. Bye. Right? So think about that. Uh, stop pursuing the volunteer opportunity so you can attend the required lab. That, again, is, is more in the ineffective, very effective because you want the volunteer. So as I mentioned, a better solution would have been attend the lab and investigate if similar others and or also discuss with your lab instructor to identify a solution that could allow you to attend both. That's how you should be always thinking about it. And don't get thrown away by hypothetical scenarios, especially if, when they use words like only. This is the only time. This is the only. This is why these things are just dumb, guys. But at the end of the day, at the bottom of my heart, I want you to succeed. succeed. That's why I make all of these for you. So I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, go ahead and share it with a friend who may enjoy it as well. Subscribe and comment with any questions you have. And I hope to see you at the next episode. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like us to help you achieve your academic and professional goals, schedule a free strategy call by visiting bmofreestrategy.com. If you have any questions about this video, let us know in the comments section and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget that we're giving away Amazon gift cards every week to best comments and questions. So comment below for a chance to win.